Horde started out as a hobby for his father Marty with just a couple of horses. It's turned into an outstanding career for his son, David Miles. I caught up with one of the Victorians here at Club and Angle today to have a talk about his four decades in harness racing. Well, David, good to catch up with you. As I mentioned in the introduction, what started out with just two horses, a hobby for your father Marty, has turned into a successful career. Yeah, it has been, and it's a, it's a life, isn't it? It's not, uh, it's not a job, it's a, it is a career and it's a lifestyle. It's all been based out of Monagita. Yes, uh, the Windy City, uh, about uh, 20 minutes north of the Melbourne airport. So uh, we're pretty central to everywhere. All the major tracks are within about an hour and a half of us. So how did your interest in harness racing kick on? Um, I went and did the Bendigo Training Centre, uh, which was a TAFE course that uh, quite a few guys did back in the 90s. Uh, I think Daryl Douglas was a was a uh, protege of the class the same uh, year I was. So, And it was very successful early in the 90s to uh, get people out into the sport. And from there went and worked, I think for that year I worked with about 12 different trainers and culminating in the end of it going and spend a, a couple of years with Teddy Demler. I was going to ask you who would be the main influences on your early career. You just mentioned one of the greats there in Teddy. Yeah, Teddy was fantastic and, you know, how to run a stable and, and uh, organisation um, and really getting everything run to the minute. It was it was run like a boot camp Teddy's place and there wasn't anything out of place. So there's still a lot of the ideas from Teddy's place that I still use today. I caught up with one of the gentlemen that you'd said was an influence on your career today, a good friend in Peter Walsh. Yeah, worked with Walshy back when he was at Deer Park and uh, when he had some great horses, our Cavalier King, Harbour Glow. So, you know, uh, Peter uh, is a fantastic fantastic conditioner of horses and turns them out immaculate. And Graham Morgan was also in the mix? Yeah, Graham was probably the, the best trainer I worked for, I think. He uh, he could work a horse to its absolute limit but still get it to, to stay up and, you yeah, know, he, uh, he was a fantastic trainer. July 2021, unfortunately, David, you were in a very nasty fall at Maryborough. You've bounced back very strongly. Yeah, yeah, no, the doctors patched me up. So, uh, um, yeah, no, it was an unfortunate incident. One just crossed its legs in front of us. We couldn't miss it. So, but it, no, that's the, uh, that's just the pitfalls of the game. We, you know, we have them here and there. It's just hopefully we can get up and, and press on afterwards. Badly broken wrist was the end result. Yeah, we got a bit of metal in there to, uh, you know, keep it together. But, uh, you know, we had a bad one 20 years ago. I've got a bit of plate in the leg as well. So it is um, it is the only job where an ambulance follows us around, Mick. So it's got to have, have some risk. <coughs> David, it is very rare to see a trainer or a driver getting around with a very clean gait. Yes, correct. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, probably only bull riders are worse off than we are. David, as your career unfolded, you were up against the best on a regular basis as far as Victorian harness racing is concerned. The toughest opponents and all the most respected opponents. Yeah, I, I was lucky enough to grow up in the Teddy Demler, Brian Gath era where those two were, were hammer and tong with, uh, and then Gavin came through obviously, who was very special to watch, had his own way of letting things unfold. Um, but you know, I've been absolutely privileged to call Chris Alford a friend and be um, be mentored by him early in my career. And uh, and he's he's just fantastic and the most competitive bloke you've ever met. He, he will try as hard in a trial as he will in a, in a $100,000 race. When you win the number of races Chris has and has also represented the amount of times he has, he has had a stellar career and deservedly so. Yeah, no, he, he has the unbelievable, uncanny ability to, to use a horse up early but leave enough petrol in it at the end of a race and uh, and he can lift a horse. There's not many drivers that lift them. Um, Gavin was one and he's another but uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, it's been great to watch their, their careers unfold. As a young fella coming through the ranks, David, when you're competing against the likes of, as you mentioned, Teddy Demler, Brian Gath and the likes, they're moving on to the likes of Gavin and Greg Sugars these days, it can only help your career. Oh, of course, you, you know, you, you've got to learn from the best and, and that's the only way you improve, you know, you've got to self-assess all the time and uh, and that's the, that's the key to being in, uh, to being successful in any sport, you know, so we, uh, you know, you have to be able to go home, watch the videos and even if you win a race, you might have been able to win it easier or, or give the horse an easier run, so that you've always got to be uh, on your medal and, and really self-assess. Very strong influence as far as the Victorians are concerned at Club and Angle today, you've certainly enjoyed some success here. Yeah, yeah, well, I've, I've, had, uh, I've had a good run of, of luck here in Harold Park. You know, I, I really enjoy coming to Sydney. I've uh, been coming up for, you know, 25 years or so and staying with uh, Richard and Carmel and Darren and Benita Hancock and they're always too welcoming. They're an amazing family. You've just taken into your stable a horse that Dan Malecki loves calling. He puts a lot of passion into the name. Ugh. 
Yes. Yeah, we've just taken him over about four months ago. He's uh, he's had a few feet issues through his life, uh, but Ray Woods and Jason, who own him, have uh, they've done a great job to to uh, keep him going. Um, but he just needed a little bit of help with some swimming and, and a softer track that they could find for him. So, and fingers crossed at this stage things are going okay. He's uh, he's in again Saturday night, and I think uh, we might have to take on catch a wave, which is obviously going to be a tough ask. But we expect him to go right through his grades, and, and whether he gets the Grand Circuit class or not, we're not sure, but they're going to have a lot of fun along the way. The Panthers and yourself had a good association, but I believe he's on the move. Yeah, she's off to America, like most of our good mares are, you know, with the lack of mares racing we have here. Um, you know, Breeders' Crown winner, which is always fantastic. She's, I think she won nearly close to a quarter of a million dollars. And, um, yeah, she's been, a, a, she's been a great addition. She's been awesome since, from two right through to, to five years old. But, yeah, she'll continue her racing in the States. And good to get Joe Rocks back. Yeah, Joe's had a. She, she was run third to Tough Tilly and Ladies in Red in a Breeders' Crown final, and she uh, she had a, a very bad illness, and we, uh, we we sent her up here to Jason Grimson, and and Jason couldn't straighten her out either. So we she had a. I think she had close to 12 months in the paddock, and seems to have done the trick. She's on her way back, and hopefully we'll see her in the next couple of months. David, I noticed on your website you're looking for staff, and the one thing you did promise them, plenty of good fresh air, but no doubt at this time of year it'd be a little bit chilly as well. Well, Monagita does have the tendency to be called pleurisy plain, so, um, yeah, no, in winter she's pretty brisk, but like anywhere in Victoria, and, but, uh, you know, we get, uh, you know, seven or eight months really good weather, um, but staff issues, are, they're a major thing in all the equine industries, you know, we, we see the Friedman boys, you know, tweeting a lot at the moment about how they need to change the, the, the galloping industry to get people, and, and we need to do the same, there is, there's just not enough staff, um, obviously COVID's had an impact on that, but going forward we, we really need to uh, help these these kids along. Um, I'm lucky enough to to help out in Tasmania. I'm teaching the junior drivers down in Tasmania at the moment, and and just trying to get as many kids into the sport because uh, you know the, there's so many big trainers that are needing staff and could work more horses. And you know the better product we put on, the more people and the more money we'll make, and the more people will bet. And you, one thing we should point out: you'd mentioned the betting side of it. You don't have to be interested in the, in that side of the industry to get involved with the love of a horse. Hundred percent, you know, and that's where a lot of the the kids that come through. That's how it all starts. They, they they're actually not punters. And the the young fellow that I've had with me for ten years, I, I don't think he know, even knows how to have a bet. Which is he is there specifically for the love of the horse. And there's there's thirty in work there, and they they get to handle them all. They get all different sorts of jobs. So it's a uh, it's a great. It's a great lifestyle. Um, I'm not saying it's, it's not long hours sometimes, but, you know, it's, uh, it's really rewarding. And, and as you say, you, you fall in love with a, with a lovely pony and most of the standard breeds are great horses. So, so horse lovers really enjoy standard breeds. Well, David, how can people get in touch with you? Uh, yeah, they, I've got a website, Facebook page um, and Twitter, so, um, or get in touch with the authority. But, um, yeah, you know, it would uh, be really great to have a, another young driver come through and, and try and uh, educate and make another Chris Alford. That'd be great. You can't be that beautiful fresh air. Correct, 100%. David, great to catch up. We look forward to you being back at Club Menangle shortly. Thanks, Mick. Appreciate it.